who cares about the year of the Linux desktop? 2024 is the year of the NVIDIA Linux desktop. That is not something I thought I would ever say. There have been massive strides being made with the proprietary drivers on Wayland, and from my understanding with new cards, they are actually pretty good now if you're on the latest driver stream. But more importantly for what we're talking about today, there has been a lot of really cool stuff going on over in NVK land. Now for anyone out of the loop, NVK is the open source Vulkan driver available for NVIDIA GPUs in the Mesa project. And last time I talked about it, it was already in a fairly good state, but now it's in an even better state. NVK is now ready for prime time. Today, I am proud to announce that NVK, the open source Vulkan driver for NVIDIA hardware in Mesa, is now ready for prime time. I just landed a merge request, which gets rid of the non-conformant implementation warnings and changes the Mesa configuration option for NVK from Novo Experimental to just Novo. This will act as a signal to distros that it's now time to start shipping NVK to users. I can't speak on behalf of distros, but NVK will be part of Mesa 24.1, and you should expect to see it in either the spring or fall release of your favourite Linux distro. Currently, the latest version of Mesa is 24.0.2, and we actually do know when 24.1 should be shipping. Assuming nothing goes wrong with the release schedule, April 10th, 2024. So... That means it's going to be on your rolling releases fairly soon. You'll probably see it around, I don't know, the 15th or 20th if you're on something like Arch, Gen 2 and things like that. If you're on a point release, it is going to miss the window for both Ubuntu 24.04 and Fedora 40. So you'll almost certainly be seeing it ship on the next versions, 24.10 and Fedora 41. For the distros that have a completely different release schedule, maybe you'll see it, maybe you won't. It will depend on the way they do their testing. For a distro like PopOS, which does try to make certain components considerably newer than what is available on Ubuntu, you're probably maybe going to see it in the next version, but I can't say that for certain. What I can't confirm one way or the other is whether when they ship 24.1, they are going to have this enabled or not. I don't see any reason why they would disable it, but maybe they come up with some like weird reason why they like legally have to do so. Most distros are probably going to all start shipping this by the end of the year, all enabled by default. Now here is that merge request in question, NVK, we're a real Vulcan driver now. Initially, there were a couple of minor CI issues that hadn't been dealt with yet. They got dealt with fairly quickly, though. And there was also a question from Alyssa Rosenzweig. Does it make sense to build by default on all platforms, like we do for Gallium Novo? Specifically thinking about NVIDIA DGPU hooked up to a PCI-capable ARM64 or PPC64 server board, as well as Tegra. I'd like to see someone prove that it even works on ARM before we make it build by default. So, if there's somebody out there who happens to have a discrete GPU, they plug into an ARM64 system, um, give it a try and let them know if it should be enabled. Back in October, I announced that NVK had reached Vulkan 1.0 conformance on Turing hardware. I believe back at this time, I also did a video on this. As of today, NVK is now a conformant Vulkan 1.3 implementation on Turing, so RTX 2000 and GTX 1600 series, Ampere, RTX 3000, and Ada, RTX 4000 series GPUs. Which probably leaves you asking, what about the 1000 series GPUs? And, uh, I don't have great news for you, but you're not going to have NVK support and you're going to want to keep using the proprietary drivers. Keep in mind, those GPUs are now about 8 years old. And yes, I know some people buy secondhand GPUs and keep them around for a really long time. But a cutoff point needed to be made. And whilst this isn't a great cutoff point today, when, say, these GPUs here, the Turing, this is a terrible site to highlight on, 
when the Turing GPUs are, say, 10 years old, they are going to be in the place of those 1000 series GPUs. And by that point, you are actually going to have support for NVK if you buy an older GPU like that. Those cards do have the ability to run Vulkan. So theoretically, if somebody wanted to write support for them, they absolutely could, and maybe that support would be accepted into the project. But from the project itself, that is not being considered a priority, and that's probably not going to change. Not only have we jumped forward with three Vulcan versions, but the new test runs were done with the GSP firmware enabled and includes AMP and ADA GPUs. This is the firmware which enables things like changing voltage, which for some reason you can't do without proprietary firmware. Thank you, NVIDIA. Also, Unlike the initial 1.0 run, there are no hacks this time. Every test we passed in those conformance test runs also passes on upstream Mesa. So it's an actual functional driver that can be used to do actual real GPU things. Whilst good GPU support is good generally for Linux users, you're probably not going to be buying an NVIDIA GPU unless you're going to do something like gaming. And gaming is getting pretty good with these drivers. We've also been hard at work the last few months, finishing up the final bits required so that DXVK now runs out of the box on upstream Mesa. Not every D3 D11 game, that being DirectX 11, is guaranteed to work. There will be bugs, but the core requirements are still there. We are actively working on the remaining pieces to support D3 D12, DirectX 12, emulation via VKD3D Proton. A lot is already done or in progress, but there are still a few pieces missing, so don't expect DirectX 12 games to work just yet. If your game happens to have native Vulkan support though, well, you know, you're in a pretty good state, and that's one less thing you need to worry about. I'll leave some videos in the description down below. They are going to be a couple of months old, but even back then, gaming on this driver was already in a fairly good state. It wasn't perfect, and a lot of games are going to be a bit of a problem. But the fact that there is the possibility of playing modern games with most of the performance being there is absolutely wild. Now, outside of gaming, OpenGL is still very important on the Linux desktop. For OpenGL support, we are still expecting Zinc plus NVK to be the plan going forward. Not everything works yet, but we are also actively triaging the remaining Zinc bugs to provide OpenGL 4.6 on top of NVK via Zinc. While the old Novo OpenGL driver will continue to exist and work as well as it ever has, Zinc plus NVK has already surpassed the old OpenGL in terms of performance in many cases. In the long term, we expect it to offer more features and better stability as well. Now, some of you might be curious about what Zinc is. So, Zinc is actually a really cool concept. So, you know what DXVK is where you run DirectX through Vulkan to get it working on Linux. Now, Zinc is a fairly similar concept where you run OpenGL calls through Vulkan to get it working. So you don't actually need a specific OpenGL driver. It's just being done on the already existing Vulkan stuff that is there. And whilst there is going to be some overhead here, it's not that much. And in many of the tests, it's actually kind of negligible for the kinds of workloads being done with OpenGL. Performance is still a work in progress and continues to improve regularly. A lot of titles are running at 60 FPS or better on recent GPUs. With others, we're seeing bottlenecks that we have yet to triage. If you want to know if your favorite game performs well, the best way is to just try it. Now, as I said, a couple of months ago, Things were already running fairly well, and the main issues I saw wasn't the overall performance, it was more about the general playability. It was more about things like frame drops and frame timing. Technically, the frame rate averages were pretty good, but the minimums were pretty bad, so you'd have these weird stutters that just happened out of nowhere, which feel a lot worse than a general lower frame rate. That is something that they do absolutely need to continue to address, and it's probably going to be a very game-by-game -game problem. Then there's the whole frame timing issue leading to tearing and stuttering, which obviously is not a pleasant experience, and is going to be dealt with over time. But 
at least from the videos that are available, it seems playable, which is not the state it was in when it started. Back when, ah, oh, you could get one FPS in a fairly old indie game. No, you can play Tales of Arise at 60 FPS mostly consistently with a couple of frame drops. Keep in mind, that was the state back in October when they only had Vulcan 1.0 support, not Vulcan 1.3, and just general improvements being made. So without a doubt, it is going to perform way, way better. And if you happen to have an NVIDIA card and you just want to mess around with it, go ahead and do so, and I'm sure the project is going to appreciate your feedback. I am genuinely impressed with the state of the project today. If you told me, like, three, four years ago, that by 2024, we are going to have good, not perfect, still work in progress, open NVIDIA drivers that worked on modern GPUs, I probably wouldn't have believed you because, yeah, Novo existed, but Novo because of the changes that NVIDIA had made to the GPUs, moving the firmware around, changing what can actually be done, they just wasn't usable. You just could not use Novo if you actually wanted a good GPU experience. Now, though, you can. And it's probably going to get better and better and better. And I would say within, like, two or three years we might actually be at a point where if you buy an NVIDIA GPU, you legitimately do question, do I want to run the open drivers or do I want to run the proprietary ones? Because there is still going to be value in the proprietary drivers. If you want to use CUDA, if you want to use all of those fancy NVIDIA proprietary tech they have, you have to use that. But if all you care about is using the GPU to render graphics... The open drivers might actually be worth considering soon. But what do you think? Do you have an NVIDIA GPU? If NVK was in a perfect state, everything was done, it was working like it should, would you consider buying an NVIDIA GPU? Or do you want to just support AMD because AMD is actually supporting the openness themselves? I would love to know. Let me know your thoughts down below. So if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scribes, Link, Barrow Pay, link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and I'm happy on AMD now, but I don't know, it's kind of compelling.